Uh, well, thank you very much for the invitation to uh, share my um, impression on the current state. Let's say it like that. Um, uh, as I already said, I'm coming from the, as a, like as a researcher from the University of Belgrade, but I also work in the museum sector as associate nowadays of the Museum of Yugoslavia. Uh, more importantly, I'm uh, the art historian and cultural manager. Uh, and my PhD was somehow dealing with the uh, actually use of contemporary art in the uh, models of uh, historical models of collecting or in cabinets of wonders particularly. Uh, so this is the background from which I'm starting actually the whole uh, thoughts about the collecting processes uh, during the time of crisis. Uh, the crisis nowadays is pandemic, but I will somehow, coming from the local context uh, uh, during the presentation, we'll be speaking about crises uh, that happened uh, uh, in the recent history, unfortunately, in, the, uh, in Yugoslavia, which was also my, uh, somehow my, my, my research preoccupancy during PhD studies and afterwards. Uh, so some keywords which we are nowadays coming to, uh, in many different documents which are shared all around uh, uh, about how to surpass the crisis and how to deal with it, uh, how to sustain uh, the whole sector of arts and museum uh, are those words which are also uh, somehow the keywords for this uh, meeting today. And those are the, the mentioned crisis, but at first resilience. Uh, solidarity is really important one nowadays, but also creativity and uh, I would add collecting process, not I would add, but many add that, but it, it will be a somehow important keyword for this presentation or for my thoughts. Uh, so when thinking about collecting, we could find many different uh, um, observations how it should look like or not. And I'm just trying to, um, I'm sharing just one. Uh, which is given by ICON during this April. Uh, it is one of the steps of that uh, um, supporting community resilience document uh, given by ICOM. Uh, the sixth one actually is consider the possibility of rapid response collecting and documenting the crisis and, in, and its impact and promise to come back to it afterwards. And this will be important as well, promise to come back to it afterwards. Um, so, the creativity, of course, we are finding the arts sector really important, like for the psychologically important in this crisis and times of uh, uh, isolation as well. Uh, but uh, there was nice slogan given by UNESCO, and it was because art makes us resilient. And they uh, had uh, now have uh, started with the whole activity called Resili Art, artists and creativity beyond crisis. Uh, so those will be two medals uh, while thinking about that creative collecting or uh, nowadays, uh, which was the title of the presentation. Um, so I would say that collection plus creativity or um, collecting process plus art uh, and artistic processes uh, uh, actually equals resilience or make costs and therefore museums as well, and we are museums, so uh, museums are collecting institutions, so uh, a collection plus creativity is that resilience. Um, I will try to somehow persuade you in that during the presentation. Uh, I liked the talk of Brian Eno, uh, uh, actually Yanis Varoufakis with Brian Eno, uh, and uh, when he was referring to the um, importance of art nowadays, he said something really beautiful, and that is that the system of art is resilient and art is now responsible for the change. Uh, artists are the people who provide material for imagining different future. Uh, and he said that he thinks that we have a mission to create something that people remember this period wonderfully, not just with the fear, uh, so unified, solidary, with a sense of belonging, being part of something meaningful. Um, and as I, uh, as I already represented myself, uh, I was really interested during my researches, but also a practical and curatorial work. I was really interested in, uh, in memory as artistic or raw material, which artists and creative uh, individuals would use uh, uh, in further, uh, actually, um, uh, development of their works. Uh, it is really important that there is always the strong emotional and personal relation towards 
uh, those artworks or uh, even collections and well, I will come to the to the word collection during the whole presentation afterwards uh, so actually uh, many times physical representation of the or that embodying of the crisis externalizing the crisis uh, is important in the nowadays many different media so not just the objects as some semi of or uh, uh, or preservers of memories and associators of memories but also photos or any other media nowadays um, so the local context uh, uh, which i promised somehow is the context of the um, dissolution of yugoslavia or actually the period of 90s which was following uh, um, period after the or in the, during the dissolution of yugoslavia uh, the shift of ideology definitely has happened and the, you are all somehow um, uh, introduced to the uh, to the atmosphere probably of it but definitely it uh, uh, changed a lot uh, cultural policy itself and uh, the relationship towards the memory or the public and public memory and politics of memory uh, itself um, there are two distinguished professors, Milena dragicevic who is uh, uh, who was chair of the UNESCO Chair for the Cultural Policy and Management, and she wrote uh, uh, this book called The Management of Crisis in Turbulent Circumstances, uh, Management of Art in Turbulent, in Turbulent Circumstances, with a colleague from Croatia, Sanin Dragojevic. And uh, it, is uh, it is interesting how those two, the, the, the two of them define uh, the turbulent circumstances or uh, the crisis here during 90s was uh, followed by that dis uh, disintegration of political system, economic crisis, inflation, a decrease in standard, forced migrations, inter-ethical and intercultural conflicts, uh, break of transport and communication, political isolation, uh, terrorist actions, corruption, and uh, I'm saying that I'm naming just a few. Um, uh, so uh, in that period, you can imagine uh, the, the, the museums. To the society, or actually the identity was so fastly uh, uh, changed by the ru new ruling ideology uh, that state museums even were closed uh, for more than a decade. It took speaking about the National Museum and Museum of Contemporary Art in Belgrade, for example, but that happened as well in, in the region. Uh, so those museums were actually, asked, and museum workers inside were asking themselves which image now to, to represent or how to represent that identity or how to go off the lost identity uh, to, to, some, to some new one. Uh, uh, on the other hand, uh, what was happening is that uh, Parallelly, the whole uh, scene of uh, uh, artists and cultural workers was created, which was completely independent, uh, which was not actually exposing in museums as museums were closed, or uh, which was dealing with topics which were invisible in the public museum institutions. Uh, the most uh, interesting for me and for today's topic is actually that idea of uh, uh, contemporary art artists as collector, uh, as the one who is really dealing with the memories, with raw materials, and afterwards creating um, ready-mades, uh, installations, or even the whole museums. Uh, it is not new, it is something which from the modern uh, art history onwards is happening, but here it was interesting that artists were uh, um, that those modern flan airs, uh, but not just to the, through the cities, but also through the flea markets and piles of trash. Uh, many abandoned uh, um, companies, uh, many ruined houses and abandoned houses after the migration forced after the forced migration. So what they were collecting were uh, different photo albums with the lost owners in, in, in them or um, many different products of the bankrupted companies uh, uh, and so on and so on. Uh, afterwards, they were creating artworks of them, but uh, I always like to think about that um, pile of trash or flea market as something which is that valueless and timeless limbo uh, if we follow the Michael Thompson rubbish theory or actually that uh, limbo from which they are taking out and recontextualizing, giving the value to, uh, to the object which also we 
as museum curators do as well in, 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 the, in, in, the, in the museum building or context, not building that. Uh, on the other hand, uh, that is the archaeological context which Peter Van Mensch uh, defined already uh, uh, in the museological theory. So some of those artists are Vladimir Peric, which after, which after the 10 years project called the Museum of Childhood actually has created a collection which now is in search for the building of the Museum of Childhood. You maybe recognize the installation which I decided to show. It is the installation of those 400 Mickey Mouse dolls from one of the bankrupted companies from Biser Zagreb, which produced those. He collected those at the flea markets, but uh, in the meanwhile, uh, he was joined by an art historian. So now they actually have the whole documentation, the real uh, museum documentation of each and every object. This installation is called 3D wallpaper for children's room. And it, is a, it was actually the uh, installation shown as well at the Biennial of, uh, in, in Venice in 2013. That's why I said that maybe you recognize it. But what he, what he is doing is uh, uh, quite recognizable. Uh, uh, co he is collecting the photo albums, which are from the, those lost owners uh, or the lost childhood somehow in, the, in that uh, mom momentum of the, the disasters uh, and the ruins of Yugoslavia, those candy boxes, and, and he, this is the artist. Um, you can you can you can even visually re recognize the references. On the other hand, there are, uh, there there is Dragan Papic with his inner museum or museum of kitsch. He was also collecting at the free markets, flea markets, and now he has his museum called Inner Museum or Museum of Kitsch, which is museum in his apartment. He is somehow performing when you visit the museum itself. And the museum finally uh, has got the prize of the October Saloon, which is the most, the biggest contemporary art biennial here. Uh, so he is somehow not visible in any public insti museum institution, but he was recognized finally as really important on the scene. What was interesting is that they did not collect just the, the the personal memories, the micro histories, but also the that pub that, that mentioned public memory, which was somehow neglected in the period of the shift of ideology. So um, Yossi Bros Tito, uh, whom you maybe can recognize, were um, represented in all different uh, uh, levels of uh, uh, of our subconscious, even during the socialist Yugoslavia, but on the public the public sculptures, on the public squares, and so on, were uh, fastly removed cut down, melted down during that period of the shift of ideology. Uh, what happened is that Dragan Srdić uh, went around those flea markets and uh, piles of trashes and collected the mo uh, famous sculptures of Tito, uh, afterwards exhibiting them as the anatomy lesson installation with more than 30 cuts. Uh, uh, sculptures, uh, uh, but also the Yossi Bros Tito, uh, how does he live after, after his death, actually, from 1980 to that moment when he exhibited that. What was interesting is that Srdić um, uh, once uh, actually bought the star which was put on the presidency of, of, on, of our presidency, Five Angle Star, which was a mark of the communism here uh, in, uh, in Belgrade. Uh, actually, in 1997, the first Democrat mayor of Belgrade, Zoran Djindjic, who afterwards was the premier of the Democrat uh, Serbia, uh, killed, or actually killed in 2003, uh, uh, Djindjic pompously uh, went on the roof of the presidency when he became a mayor and uh, took down the five angle star symbolically. What happened is actually that there was one, he went with this five angle star to the Museum of Yugoslav History, in which now I'm associate of. But the presidency building has two, two cupels, so there were two stars up there. The second star was just moved down in a more quiet sense. What happened is that the Srdić was called by people from the uh, Roma people from flea markets telling that uh, they maybe have something that he's interested in as he was already famous for collecting the lost monuments and so on and he bought actually uh, like for 50 euros this star and exhibited it, it afterwards as the artwork the fallen star make a wish. The Fallen Star Make a Wish is uh, a couple of years ago uh, bought by the City of Belgrade Museum for 3,000 euros. Uh, so, 
uh, uh, those were examples how much, uh, uh, how important were contemporary artists and their collections in the mo uh, and how they are important now uh, because we didn't have actually anyone to deal with the, uh, the, the, the intimate memories on the, or the memory which was neglected. On the other hand, the Museum of Yugoslavia and not just the Museum of Yugoslavia, but uh, many researchers are nowadays uh, uh, trying to deal with that still dissonant heritage of Yugoslavia, but also of socialism and try to interpret it from different angles. Uh, and art projects or artistic uh, in, uh, uh, somehow works still help a lot. There is that platform for contemporary art kiosk who is dealing a lot with Yugoslavia, uh, or with socialist Yugoslavia, and they had the project Yugoslavia, actually a project based on 100 museum objects from the Museum of Yugoslavia. What they took are just descriptions of those objects. And the two of them actually went around the whole region in order to find the ex-presidents uh, of the national countries, uh, distinguished historians, but also nowadays active activists, politicians, and so on, and they interviewed them, basing the interview on one of the museum objects, uh, which they find convenient for the, the selected person. Uh, uh, what happened is that, that we've got invaluable material, which we are sure that we never would uh, get as the official researchers or official museum institution, but artists and the enthusiasm of an artist uh, uh, somehow succeeded in that they were more open and more communicative, uh, sharing more personal memories somehow. Uh, so uh, I will somehow try to conclude and to come to nowadays situation. Um, resilience is uh, uh, actually uh, for me the collecting and creative response to the state of crisis and turbulent period. Um, uh, it is, as we saw at the beginning, the potential for imagining the world differently, or let's say that we now have that potential uh, to somehow be multivocal and solidary and to, the res to respond to the state of crisis. Um, uh, somehow, a colleague of mine, Maria Djordjevic from Belgrade University as well, and me have uh, somehow found uh, the... Yeah, felt that we are also, uh, in, that it is important to, to deal with the crisis uh, uh, emergently or urgently. Uh, and the, the two of them also have uh, uh, opened one participatory collection uh, uh, or platform for the future virtual participatory collection, which is uh, cultural emergency, thinking about different urgencies which culture, in which culture can help, but nowadays concentrating at most to the, uh, to the um, pandemic situation in the arts and museum sector. And you're all more than welcome to visit the site, but also to contribute uh, and invited to, go, to contribute. Because uh, as we find, and as we could see from our experiences of artists before, the invaluable is the moment of inspiration and inspiration and that strong creative response to the state of fear loneliness due to isolation, sadness or rage. This is why I think that museums, artists and cultural workers should use this momentum of pandemic to surpass their own crisis or the museum crisis, which is lasting longer than, than, than the pandemic itself, to be more relevant than ever and to fulfill the needs of, of, of the need of society or many needs of society. So thank you very much for now. I, 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 yeah, I think I spoke a lot. <laughs> Well, thank you, Melina. That was really inspiring and incredibly fascinating to be taking through all these different projects. Um, it really struck me how your example shows how participatory art practice has played such an essential role in driving social transformation and really shift values and, and how this work, work helped build and rebuild a new sense of belonging and um, and collective uh, identity. And I'm thinking like during the period of the dissolution of Yugoslavia, museums were in this strange interim period where they could not talk about shared memories and um, they were really forced to rethink themselves. And um, thinking about the situation we are in now, in a sense, we are equally between a period of before and after right now. Um, and I think we are all here today because we are searching for answers as to how we 
our roles will be in the post-COVID world and also even more so in, in a world of returning and overlapping crises in the face of, of the climate change over the next decades. Um, so I wonder if you could talk about from your experience, um, what kind of memories do you think that we should be collecting now to help our communities rise stronger and with more resilience? Um, what is it from the memories that you saw that were collected were the most um, impactful and supporting memories were that um, maybe one could talk about there are very personal memories that kind of create a sense of commonality and shared identity between people and then there are memories that everyone shares because it's public moments um, in, in a specific place or, and maybe you have other thoughts of kind of categories of memories that one should be collecting in such a moment. Yeah, Nietzsche, well, thank you. Thank you very much for the question. It is, it is really, yeah, important one. Uh, well, Nietzsche once said the dose of oblivion is, uh, is important in order to survive. Uh, and uh, uh, if I would select the memories, which are, I think, the most important, or let's see if that I saw somehow really important and not so, uh, that the attention was not so paid to them, I would say that those are those emotional uh, relationships toward, towards the through, towards the situation and memories which are personal those micro histories uh, maybe because I'm coming from the perspective that my first bigger research is the research of photo albums of my uh, grandmother who changed the identity from uh, the Jew to the to Serbian in order to serve to surpass the war uh, so uh, somehow I didn't know her she, she changed completely her identity and I didn't know her uh, the, the name uh, of, of her previous life, let's say it like that, but uh, 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 definitely she, th that's why I started this with that suppression of, of, mem of some memories in order to uh, somehow survive the trauma. But on the other hand, uh, I found really important in my personal identity construction, but also con identity construction of the whole uh, family and surrounding the, in her life and in her personal memories, which were hidden, uh, put aside, and so on. This, is, this same was happening when I was researching the contemporary artists, as you could see from the presentations. Those are mostly really, uh, really, um, strong emotional relations to something which is not a publicly wanted memory uh, uh, and there is actually that memory boom which happened by the end of 20th century and the beginning of the 21st century where actually after the holocaust but after even the, the fall of the berlin wall but many other uh, actually circumstances uh, uh, finally uh, Make us, made us uh, that, that think why are we so much thinking about memories and why the memory boom or why isn't the dominant history enough and I think that the dominant history is not enough so what we are probably should do is trying not to to be yeah to be thinking about dominant histories uh, or, or political circumstances or the wished memories the public ones I don't know if I succeeded in answering, but these are my thoughts on that. <laughs> are there anyone else who have more questions to that specific subject? Yeah, um, I think there were some interesting points that were raised and taking the case of, of, uh, of the National Museum um, of Yugoslavia and what Milena spoke about and comparing it to what, for example, uh, has been coming out in various blogs and, uh, and other, uh, other information sources or platforms, you know? There is a lot of collecting happening. Um, Musem, for example, have just posted um, that most of what they have been collecting, I'm not sure if, if they're still going on with it. I hope, I hope they are, but they've posted it on, on a digital platform. Uh, the National Museum of, of the Republic of, 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 the, of the Czech Republic has just uh, launched an exhibition of uh, face masks. So it seems there are already some icons um, 
which, which are coming up. Face, the face mask, uh, as predicted, probably is going to be something which is which which is symbolic. And um, the difference in all this, which 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 with your experience, uh, Milena, is that in your case there was there was uh, an icon, there was a figure, there was a, a political model, there was a, a way of living that was being questioned, that was being discussed, that was being put under under discussion. In this case. Uh, COVID is a bit of an abstract thing. You cannot associate it to an icon. You cannot associate it to a leader. So, um, in a way, the first reaction to the situation is going to be strange or interesting, if, 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 if I can say that. Um, it would be interesting to know from your experience, or perhaps there are others, I don't know, Lana or Daniel, who might, who might comment on this. Um, what what will be the the outcome? Because of, I mean, I mean, resilience is going to be something which museums are going to need. Um, but there might be some some reference points and collections and collection items that might stand for the type of resilience or the type of reaction that that museums might be going for. I don't know. Perhaps Lana or Daniel or Frances or whoever who might perhaps someone might you know might wish to add to this or. Uh, yeah, what I was thinking, thank you so much for your presentation, Milena, it was really great, thanks a lot. I uh, was thinking also about the historical distance, because this is now really, we are, we are now going out to collect frantically almost. I've been just for the Concord website, I've been researching the web to see all the projects that are happening and also to see the different approaches and it's very interesting. Um, uh, and what you see also in the last couple of weeks, there are more critical um, um, articles uh, on on questions on the ethics of collecting and uh, and also on um, so what are you doing? So how do you define what is uh, what its historical significance will be? Um, and what you don't want is, and what, what you are seeing now is everybody starting to collect the mask. Um, but by doing that, you forget all the stories. Um, uh, I was briefly, when I did my introduction, all the inequalities that are actually um, driving up, and we are all talking about solidarity. Uh, but the interesting thing is there is, we think there's a lot of solidarity, but it's also actually a lot of non-solidarity at the moment. Um, and I think we have to be aware that we don't forget those things by just collecting the masks and think that we then cover uh, this pandemic. Um, because unless you use the mask uh, as a layered object to tell all these different stories, uh, but you have to be very aware of that. Um, but I also think that we need time to digest because we're still in the middle of it. Uh, and that makes rapid response also always very difficult. So how do you decide what will be important? Um, and that's a bit, that's the thing that I'm struggling with at the moment. So where do I think it should go and what, what should be collected and not? Hmm. I would like to comment on that so I think um, so sometimes there's this uh, criticism to uh, cultural resilience like heritage building and heritage uh, values that uh, in building these values sometimes we also contributing with um, uh, like uh, nationalistic um, identities like uh, if we um, if, if this is being created very strongly as a way to um, to create joint origin and collective identities, um, it is also sometimes being used to feature in, in campaigns such as take back control in Britain or America first with uh, Donald Trump, these ways of kind of, we belong to a certain history. Um, and that, yeah, this, these heritage values are sometimes very clearly linked to that type of, um, uh, like um, thinking um, and um, so I think when we um, I wonder when we talk about collections now um, if we would think about this as 
as who mentioned uh, Sandro that uh, it's this is this is different because we are currently sharing a moment in, in time where it's a shared um, human experience that we all that we all have at the same time it's not something that is particular to a certain place or a certain locations history it's a human history that we all that we all share and um, if we were to use this as a way to build more resilient um, human, like a human shared heritage and um, kind of a, a collective identity towards a global we, if, if we would think that, and I think that is, that is one of the things that the world will, will be needing more and more is this, and also what you uh, talk about, Melina, is this uh, the global we and a strong sense of solidarity. It's not enough just to have this within geographic regions. We have to create a global sense of, of solidarity. So if we were to create collections that aim to foster that sense of global solidarity, what were the things that we would be collecting? Yeah, I mean, and in reaction to what to what Daniel was 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 mentioning, I I just like to to flag one one interesting thing, because the idea of rapid response collecting, as developed by the Victorian Albert Museum, um, they generally look at what objects are getting picked up by the media, so the platform, as to what is relevant or not, because there's always this risk that you can be, that you can present a subjective take on COVID-19, which could be skewed. But on the other hand, a museum which is open, which, is, which has to be much more embracing, has to be much more objective. So the idea of using media as a platform, something which the VNDA have experimented with, with um, I don't know, such project, uh, projects as uh, Extinction Rebellion, for example, they've been collecting stuff um, from protests, and they use the media as a, as a, as a platform. So it would be interesting to know, to, 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 to understand how collections are responding to media. This is a benchmark that is being used. And I'm curious to learn about, I don't know, what, what our Southern American colleagues have to say. Or oh, Milena, I think you. Yes, thank you so much. I will just yeah, somehow refer to, to the three of you. Um, well, I... I Ultra emergency platform, people ask me, what do you want with it? And I said, it is just a research platform because I don't think that we can now know what we will get, you know, and what will be. And we are somehow always dealing with the past from our now, from which we are uh, having ground and society around. And thinking about global we. Uh, I think that we should actually think about rethinking our identity and globalism or globality or however, you, how, well, because uh, somehow museum, even museum sector, it was uh, coming out with the virtual exhibitions, which are completely the same, like physical exhibition, just in new spaces. It was coming out with traditional models. And uh, uh, I think that we are finally facing that digital shift and that somehow the complete, uh, um, relationship towards knowledge has changed like those Foucauldian epistems are I think now again in the limelight that we should actually overthink ourselves and not to think from the uh, you know persuasive models which we all already have uh, uh, yeah maybe this is too philosophical uh, but somehow I, yeah I, I think that we should, the, the crisis can be an opportunity to um, start from the scratch some things, of course, not all of them, or to rethink some things. No, I, I think that, that, I think that's a very interesting take, but w w I mean, my, my question, which, which, is, which is a bit more specific, I mean, what can, what can this experience in, in, in the ex, ex, ex Yugoslavia territory? of collecting can what what can it tell us in in a, in, in a concrete way 
about resilience, about 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 the ecology. How 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 much resilience can can we actually um, have or acquire? Uh, taking your experience as 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 a as a point of departure. And I mean, collections are are a bit of an evidence in this. No. Yes. Thank you. Well. Uh, thinking about uh, uh, thinking about maybe that participatory moment on involvement of the uh, uh, of the nor average people, not the people, not the, the ones who are uh, like uh, the the ruling minority, uh, is that those collections and the artworks, for example, somehow helped this helped the, the initiation of the discussion, finally in the museum institution itself. Uh, there is, for example, uh, that work of Vahida Ramukic, which we uh, uh, spoke about during your visit to the museum. She actually has that installation of uh, the classroom. And uh, inside, uh, she gathered all the different uh, uh, regional history books for, uh, for the yeah, for secondary school uh, pupils. Uh, those uh, history work, books were actually treating recent history completely in a completely different manners. Uh, they somehow served completely different national politics uh, through, uh, uh, through the educational system. Uh, so it, was, it is interesting that an artwork uh, uh, finally helped the initiation of the discussion um, of our perception of what happened and uh, uh, why some things happen. The artwork is actually the, as I said, the installation of classroom, but uh, uh, nowadays current pupils are still entering the work and discussing from their perspectives, like the modern generations, even though uh, the history, the history has changed, or actually history books uh, 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 differ now from the period of 90s, but it is maybe one of the interesting examples how much actually uh, the collection uh, of those uh, of those responses in that moment can can actually can happen uh, happen the society finally help the society. Yeah, I mean, um, and Sophia, I don't know if you you have anything to add to to add to this, or perhaps someone might wish to to comment. I mean, I mean the way the way that resilience can be understood through collections could be an interesting thing, um, but I'm sure that museums are going to have to deal with much more resilience or the, the need is there. It would be interesting if, if there are already some, some instances where um, people are reacting differently because they have been hit in a different way by the COVID-19 pandemic. That could be an interesting take. Not everyone has, has, has been weathering the storm, if at all, if, 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 if there are people who have actually weathered the storm. So it could be interesting to, I don't know, to learn what Lana has to say or, or our, our South American friends perhaps, who are still online. Who are still online. Okay. Uh, so uh, first of all, uh, Milena, thank you for this presentation. Uh, I'm, I'm from another ex-Yugoslavian country, Croatia. And I like very much uh, how the topic is actually covered in this uh, in this uh, meeting. As uh, ex Yugoslavia is um, is an interesting topic. Um, people from Western countries uh, rarely really understand it, uh, or they get a lot of misinformation. And I think that uh, uh, through art um, and uh, museum projects and exhibitions, uh, we can understand and understand, like we can make them understand way way better a lot of things about it. Um, and uh, as for resilience that you, Sandra, asked about uh, how, what can, uh, what can it uh, teach us about resilience? I think that uh, in, uh, in uh, the, the topic of ex-Yugoslavia and the, and the war that dismantled the former country is uh, too much of a complex uh, topic. It's not just there were two sides that were in a fight and one won, one lost. It's not the case. Uh, that war had many particular winners, many particular losers, and um, uh, lots of topics that, uh, that are actually very, very personal. And so um, we, need, we need to embrace, embrace it through very particular personal stories. And for that reason, what I'm doing, what I have done recently on my Twitter, 
um, I almost every day write some thread on Twitter that sometimes it's, uh, it gains attention, uh, is that uh, in terms of inclusion, I don't like labels. I don't like saying, oh, this is that group. We need to prepare this and that for that group because this is nationality X, this is uh, uh, religion that, or this is, I don't know, person with disability, so it's that. No, I don't believe in such a label labeling. I think that, um, that we should start from very personal uh, situation, just like it's the case in uh, when if you want to cover the topic of ex Yugoslavia and all the all the mess that happened uh, in in that time. So so yeah, that's and uh, and well as for um, collecting, actually that's another just another topic that that I'm currently covering because of um, the idea how to how to uh, promote passion for museums and collecting. I want to start from the main purpose of museums, which is collecting. So, well, now I'm, I'm not talking about this recent history, but I'm more into, uh, from ancient Greece to Renaissance Italy. Uh, I'm more uh, writing recently about that, but, uh, but from uh, historical times to more recent times, I will cover the topic about uh, the main purpose of museums and how to promote that passion. So yeah, that's second topic I needed to comment. <laughs> Hi. 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 Um. I, I, I would like to comment on something and it's how, like the power of memory, right? And I wonder if when we, we mention about resilience, we're talking about agents who are resilient or how memory can be resilient, right? because we are having, I, I was really impressed by um, Milena's presentation and when, how he mentioned that the museums were closed in a way like trying to kind of erase memory from people to think about a new becoming of what then happened with Yugoslavia, no? So I was thinking about the resilience and memory and how those memories are kept or not. And also, I was thinking about the power of micro memories and of those most, most vulnerable communities and how these memories actually remain vivid or, or do success to be resilient in, if there is not a collector behind them. So I guess that for those like hidden memories or the memories of the most vulnerable, the role of the collector is quite important because the most vulnerable co um, communities, I think, are not thinking about how do I collect this for the future? Because I wonder if their priority is to collect those memories or not, no? And so that's in terms of the resilience of the memories of the less or, or most, vul most vulnerable. And on the other hand, I see the power of, of big countries trying to create a memory, which for example, I think that countries will be very interested. I, I wonder how, for example, we all have now a collective memory and I have never seen or live um, a situation in which I have felt a global memory, something that I'm sharing, well, I'm Colombian, no? So I have always thought about like the armed conflict or drug trafficking, and it's so hard to connect with other people because this memory is very Colombian. It's hard to, for other people to understand. So maybe when I saw the idea of Yugoslavia, I was like, huh, maybe this can resonate with me a little bit. But then I find that we're in a moment in which we all have a shared memory, but I wonder how different is it going to be presented in the future, no? And who present that memory to? It's different if, for example, China present the history of the COVID-19 and how did the government of China respond to that, uh, to that crisis? So, resilience there is something different and, 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 and the agency of that resilience is in the government of China. And, and quite interesting to see how different 
uh, would the U.S. present that um, that memory, right? Um, so all this just to say about the power of memory in terms of presenting something that happened. It it was just some thoughts. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's it's a great comment and it reminds me or I it, it made me think that the memories that are most important in this uh, in this moment in, in time are the mundane memories and those that we often perceive as uncollectible or not interesting or too mundane these are the things that we all experience in our everyday life and that makes an experience um, personal and um, yeah, I I wonder what was the reason why um, so um, in the dissolution of uh, Yugoslavia, it was a very, I mean, um, I assume it was a very um, conscious choice of the the collector, the artist. They saw that memories were being kind of degraded or not being collected or being hidden, and they wanted to gather these memories in a sense making collections now is maybe also about looking at um, not things that are being hidden but things that we take for granted or things that we don't uh, mm -hmm. um, give um, importance um, and someone needs to acknowledge that this would be important as you say in 30 years you need the distance to for the mundane things to be become important again Danielle, I feel that you are, you are noting a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was just very struck by what, what Angela Maria uh, was saying, um, uh, because this is, this, is, this is also my struggle. If you say that, uh, should we as museums then look at what is in, in the newspapers, but who is ruling the newspapers and what's in the news, so which, which representation then do you take? Um, and I was also struggling with the word of global identity. Uh, so what is global identity and can you, is that, is that something that we, that is, 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 is it possible to talk about a global identity when there's so much difference? Uh, of course, we are all looking for a kind of sameness, um, but maybe we, we, um, I don't know whether whether it's possible to find a global sameness uh, and maybe mm. we should accept the fact that there is not and take it from there uh, uh, and so uh, we should accept that sometimes also um, we um, we don't agree and accept to disagree uh, and we agree to be different and accept that and work from there uh, instead of keep on searching for the sameness. Um, and I think um, yeah, this is the best I, I find words at for that. I, I, I was very struck by the words from Angela Maria. Just to like build on that, I've, I mean, I think obviously, yeah, this idea of a collective memory is, you know, perhaps that's just an imagined idea. Can that really happen? But that's when it comes down to objects are so interesting because that's the thing that binds us. You use the object as that meeting point for those memories. And that's where, you know, you can have almost kind of social cohesion kind of appear, you know, this acceptance of differences, but the object is still the same globally, like the mask. We all have different memories based on that. Um, just kind of a thought. Um, there's Katarina and, and, and Laura, perhaps they would like to, to add something to, to the discussion. And yeah, um, for example, I, I live in Gainesville, Florida. Um, and I have been trying to find some webinars about collections or something, but I don't know. I have seen, I have watched uh, some webinars about collections, but they are more focused about uh, their procedures 
and how to what to do before uh, before the pandemic but i haven't seen any webinars related with this with collecting uh, memories uh, with experiences um, but the last week i participated in a webinar about a museum in colombia uh, the the name of the museum is pedro nel which is located in medellin medellin colombia and they they have a really interesting activity that everybody can participate and create like a personal collection based on your belongings so you can submit a video telling like um for example uh, if my home were a museum it will be a museum of so you have to complete this sentence and send a video related with with the stuff that you have at home so this is like really the first thing that i see about collections and related with our emotions and how we can bring together our emotional feelings and how um we are going to work at the same time time with our collections so yeah <laughs> This is like my thought about it. <laughs> if, if I can add, um, if I can add something else, until um, until the two Katar the two Katarinas, uh, Katarina or Katarina, if they would like to comment, on it, they, they can interrupt any any time. The paradox of all this is that. Uh, Museums in America have been given the green light to sell objects uh, to save the institution. And uh, there was an interesting comment by a top, a top, uh, one of the top brass of an American museum. And he, was, he I think he explained very well. Uh, there is a choice to be made uh, when you decide to sell something or not to sell something. And the choice is between um, holding on to value, to something which you have given value to. In this case, it's an art museum, so value is, is the art market here. And giving value to the institution and, to the, and giving precedence to the public. So in a way, you know, by looking at, at, at resilience through collections, there is this paradox as well, which is going to, to impinge very much on American museums. Uh, it's already there. I don't know what's going to happen in the case of, of Europe. Uh, there was talk of the French selling the, the Mona Lisa, but I've been talking to French colleagues and they were just laughing their head off. It will never happen. I can see Diane's smile here as well. <laughs> but it was, it was featured in Italy quite prominently on such newspapers as the Corriere della Sera, which is a top, top uh, newspaper. So, is resilience go will, will resilience mean selling our our crown jewels? Uh, will European museums come come to that? And um, I'm I'm curious to know if there's any and any reactions. I I'm not comfortable with this. I mean, I I, I think it would be the last thing I would I would sell if I was uh, a museum director. But I mean, it can happen, and it it's being it is being taunted in a way. It's it's. It, you know, it's, it's, it's being mentioned. So, I don't know, any, any reactions to this? That's a, an interesting one, because you think about sort of, would the museum lose part of its own identity by selling off some of these pieces, you know, which parts of the collection are, you know, inherent to the museum and which ones can just be sort of sold, as you say, like that's... Um... Yes, and, and, and if the museum is the collection, or if the collection is 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 solely and exclusively the the, uh, the museum's identity, or if the museum is more than that. I mean, the case the case I mentioned, that we're making a clear distinction between uh, staying alive or staying functional by selling parts of the collection, uh, other than you know 
keep hold of the collection but risk closing completely. So I mean, I wouldn't want to be in, in that person's shoes. <laughs> I don't know what you if, if you would like to. I mean, I I wouldn't. So so. I suppose what's the role in digital in all of this? You know, could you create digital three D replicas? Can this sort of act as the replacement if you have to sell it? I mean, it, it's it's something which which the Van Gogh Museum has 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 done. They, they have been sending replicas of paintings to to um, to people's houses. But then again, with the digital, it's a question of value. I mean, we, we give value to the original and not to the digital. So. We, uh, I mean, it's it's a it's a tricky one. I, mean, I don't know if there is if there is any 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 reaction to to this. It's a it's a very fascinating subject and very topical. I don't know, um, uh, Laura. Perhaps have have you any any comments? Laura is not listening. I'm yes. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to find the link <laughs> no. about about if my home were a museum i'm sorry <laughs> well i too think that these questions are opening up to other topics for other meetups <laughs> and um, if you have one specific idea a specific topic that we should actually develop in another meetup um yeah just just send me a message or just post it in the comments in the, in the event on the online community I feel we should organize one about how you collect this intangible, um, uh, yeah, intangible um, crisis. <laughs> yeah, history that we are actually living today. Um, because we kept seeing on, on the media like so many different things and most of them are not really relevant or like you said, Daniel, not really ethical. So a lot of big questions are actually um, looking for answers or guidance um, so I feel we should organize one of them yeah one 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 meetup around this topic and if you think about something else um, yeah let's let's brainstorm uh, in the comments on the platform <laughs> could be really really good thank you so much Milena um, it was really beautiful and insightful to actually have all your learnings from all is years of research and personal experiences as well. Thank you, Anne Sophie, for your perspective and bringing, um, uh, yeah, putting the, 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 the discussion on a higher level or, or more global level <laughs> as well. Um, thanks, Sandro, thanks a lot, Daniel, Frances, Lana, Katarina, Laura. Um, we finished in a small group. Um, but very interesting uh, conversation and I, I feel this is actually the beginning of, of a longer and deeper um, discussion. So thank you so much. This will be like this has been recorded and will be actually um, put online very soon on the platform as well. And um, yeah, if you want to, to add something or have a last comment, <laughs> it's the right time. I just want to say to Sandra, it's a very, I didn't want to go into your question now because I think it, it deserves a, a separate meetup because it's a very interesting question. Yes. Um, Let's do it then. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Okay, okay. Yeah. Let's and do it. <laughs> thank you so much for the invitation. Thank you, Sandra, for, for asking me to join the network, but also thank you to all of you to, to the to this to this beautiful meeting and uh, to actually giving me the opportunity to somehow uh, uh, yeah say my thoughts thoughts about uh, about the situation. Thank you so much. Thanks, and Sophie, Sandra, do you have something to add? And Sophie. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Also, thank you so much, Melina. I think it's it's just incredibly interesting and valuable to hear about your experiences and uh, I think there's so much to learn from all the work that you are referring to so I think that's just yeah lots of material to continue uh, conversations and um, you would be one of the people that I would go back to if I was to create a, a project that was um, that had to do with resilience work and, and museums thank you so much so I think by 
yeah, this is what the BMC network is about, is finding out how we can draw from each other's uh, learnings and grow on the top of each other. So thank you for that. Thank you so much. Sandra, do you, have, do you want to have the last words? <laughs> Well, um, uh, well, thanks once again. I mean, I enjoy these discussions tremendously. I learn a lot. Uh, I love to share all that I that I'm coming up that, that that comes my way when I when I'm I'm writing my blogs and my stuff. And uh, yes, I I agree with you, Danielle. Yes, there is so much to talk about. There is so much that we can share, and. Uh, so much that can help us grow together that yes looking forward to the next one absolutely and i think this platform is perfect for that i really absolutely. love being part of this one you're a great group so thank you so much for making this Thanks. happen thank you <laughs> have a good um end of the day evening day actually because it's the morning for um for Laura, i think so in florida um and yeah we see each other very soon online <laughs> bye Bye. 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 Bye.